Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the workshop to part two of the pipe tomahawk series. We've got this Damascus pipe tomahawk all prepped and ready for heat treating. But before we get into the quench sort of stuff, uh, what we need to do is refine the grain structure inside that steel. Luckily, we have this beautiful Paragon kiln here. I'm going to go ahead, throw it inside, set a program that will cause the grain of the steel to get very refined, uh, basically by going hot and then cooler and then a little bit less hot and then cooler and then a little bit less hot. Uh, and then we'll be ready for quench. I'm just going to throw it in here. All right. And now I can program this kiln. All right, it is in the fire. It's time for a little bit of coffee and then I'm gonna do some work on the cavalry saber guard while we're waiting for that to do its thing. All right, so it's done in here. Time to let it get it out and let it cool down all the way. And then we will program this thing back up to run to 1500 degrees so that we can quench this and harden it. Okay, it's cooled down a bit now. We're gonna go back into the kiln. It's gonna come up to 1500 degrees and then I will take it out and quench it. Okay guys, it is at 1500 degrees now. I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna quench it right in here. I'm gonna leave that door open because I want it to cool down as fast as possible because I'm going to temper this thing in, in there in just a second. So look at that. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Boom. The scale just popped at me. Okay, so it's cooled down a bit. So what we're going to do is make sure that it actually hardens. All right, good stuff. I'm ready for that kiln to cool down all the way. I'm going to go ahead and grind off a little bit of the blade so we can see the temper colors and stuff like that. Right now, now that I've got a little bit of the blade cleaned off, I'm going to throw it back into the kiln and, uh, and I'm going to temper it. So I'm going to do two cycles at 425 degrees each and let it cool down to room temperature in between then. That's the plan. Back in here, set a quick tempering program. We'll just let it hang out in there for a bit. All right, we're back. It's the next morning. I've had some coffee. I'm now ready to see how this thing looks after temper. Woo! That looks pretty dang good. We've got some beautiful straw colors, a little bit of purple in there. Time to move on to more cleanup work, get all of that nasty forge scale off there. I'm actually going to throw this in vinegar for a couple hours and let uh, that melt off some of that forge scale. And then after that, I'll get back on to grinding. So we're done in the grinding room until the final sharpening on this thing. I, I don't even have any words for how excited I am. This thing is coming out so freaking nice. I'm very, very, very happy with how it's coming out. Time to move on to the final hand sanding and hand finishing. Uh, most of this is at a, a, oh, what is it? Is it an A, I think it's at an A45, so a Gator Trizac belt. And so I'm gonna start off hand sanding with 240 grit on my sanding sticks and then move on to 400 grit before the etch. All right, folks, you've seen it in slow motion flyby shots. The head's pretty much done, ready for etch. So time to move on to the handle work, cutting out a piece of hickory and fitting it to this eye. Now, I'm making this handle and it's gonna take a lot less time than if I was fitting it up on an ax. And the reason for that is that a tomahawk eye is not an hourglass shape like a hatchet or a hammer. The inside of this eye looks like an hourglass like that and then it's been wedged up, there, the handle's been split and then a wedge has been pushed in to hold it in place. Now a tomahawk is not that way. This eye just tapers in one direction and so the handle is only held on by friction and not by a wedge of any sort. So basically the handle will be made to fit and push through this way and then it'll flare out at the top 
and it'll be held on just by friction. So it's a lot easier to make one of these than it is a hatchet handle. So that's pretty handy. We're gonna go ahead, whip one of those up right quick and throw it in here before we do the ash. I just spent about, what was that, 45 minutes? And uh, as I was working the head up the, uh, up the handle, I was tapping it down and then hitting it again to knock the head off. And on that last tap, uh, unfortunately, that is simply unacceptable. So I'm uh, gonna go ahead and re restart, remake one. So that sucks, but we're gonna move past it and get this handle done. Figured I should share this with you guys. I tried to blow all the, the wood dust off me with the air compressor and I accidentally turned myself into Alex Steele. So that's too bad. Okay guys, we've got a handle on things. This right here is things. Um, so now that we've got it on there, it's still a little bit crooked on there. That's probably my fault from when I punched and drifted the eye, but I'm gonna take a rasp and do a little bit of cheating and get that tweaked over. After that, I'm going to throw it into the ferric, the, I'm gonna throw the head into the ferric chloride. I'll take it out, scrub off all those oxides, and then I'm gonna etch my maker's mark. I'm gonna do it right up top there, and then I'll put it into the instant coffee. After it's out of the instant coffee, I'll do the final sharpening of it, uh, and then it'll be done. So we're getting there. Almost there, a little bit more woodwork uh, before we move on to the etching process. The hawk has been neutralized. I'm gonna go ahead and dip it in the acid really quick. Make sure that there's no oil spots on there that aren't gonna etch properly. And then, uh, and then I'll dip it in and we'll let it sit in there for like 35 minutes or so. There's that. Oh, ho, 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 ho. We're gonna go ahead now that that axe head, not axe head, tomahawk head is in the acid. We're gonna go ahead and give this thing a little burn and then we're gonna seal it with some pine tar. So. Let's get to it. All right, we might need to scrub this off and try again because I don't like the way that it looks. I'm just gonna use some steel wool and, uh, and kind of scrub that off and then give it another go. Okay, I kind of like this uh, kind of like raccoon tail look. Uh, so I'm gonna hit it with some steel wool to get it a little bit shinier, and then I'll seal it with pine tar. Oh man, this stuff smells so good. And it's time to take the tomahawk out of etch. Okay, oh my goodness. Guys, have a look at this thing. It is off the hook. Holy freaking cow. It is now neutralized over to the sink. And we're gonna take Alex's toothbrush and we're gonna clean this thing off. I'm gonna grab some 2,500 grit sandpaper and wet sand on that to scrub out those oxides. All right. Well, um, I am absolutely thrilled with how that pattern looks. It's looking, looking pretty killer. It's time for me to buff the blade with a, uh, a pretty aggressive buffing compound and then we'll move in and I'll do my, I'll etch my maker's mark right in here and then after that it'll be into the instant coffee etching to completely darken up the blade to make the 1080 darks really black and, uh, and then the 15 and 20 will stay nice and polished uh, and after that 
it's on the handle and it's finished, ready, ready for some throwing. I've got the stencils here. We'll go right there. And there we go. That should hold it pretty steady while we etch. We've got it grounded. Now let's put chemicals on it. We only want a little bit. What that does, it's basically just a fancy saline solution, so salt and water, essentially. Uh, and it is what actually creates the arc between the piece and the etcher. So we're setting it on etch first and then mark afterwards. Uh, I usually etch for about two minutes because it's pretty slow. And after that, I'll set it on to mark and do about another two minutes of marking. Get in there. All right, we're at that two minute mark now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and switch this to mark and then we'll get this thing finished off. All right, and that should just about do it. Bada bing, bada boom. Oh no, I etched this on the underside. I'm just kidding, it's on the right side. <laughs> Time to use this cheap glass vase that I bought specifically for coffee etching, fun fact. And uh, some instant coffee. Oh, perfect. That should be good. We'll let it sit in this coffee for We'll say 20 minutes to start off with. Okay, it's been in here for almost an hour actually. It ended up, I had to like wash it off a couple times, but it's looking pretty sweet now. So time for one final wash off and neutralize. Oh yeah, rinse it off, just dry it off. Oh goodness gracious, this is awesome. Bada bing, bada boom, that is one etched pipe tomahawk head. It is still a pipe tomahawk despite the fact that it doesn't have a hole for smoking through, by the way. Pipe tomahawks could have a hammer or a spike or be a pipe. So it is still a pipe tomahawk. Uh, and some of you guys were also, I was reading the comments on the first video, some of you guys were also worried about this fullard section right there. It's still between 150 and 190 thou uh, thick there, which is it's plenty thick. There's really nothing to worry about there, honestly. Um, but right now it's time to run into the grinding room and sharpen it, and then we'll be ready for the final assembly. Well, I am absolutely ecstatic about how this came out. It looks fantastic. We've got good topographical etch. We've got nice contrast. We've got a ridiculously sharp edge. I'm just thrilled. This thing is for sure one of the coolest things I've ever made. Uh, I haven't done very many things like this. I've mostly done chef's knives. Uh, and this is just opposite and totally different. Uh, and what an absolutely fun journey to get here. Thank you guys so much for following along. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.